Hey what's up guys alone here so today I did hit masters on my bronze to masters account I just want to clear something up before I start this video you can see that I'm masters by the way uh, I did play mostly support to that rank and I'm going to talk about that in just a sec but you can see here in the quick play I played mostly Symmetra in the quick play and I also last season played Symmetra, uh, Farah, Roadhog remember the things I talked about in my previous videos it's the same account even though I changed the name from teleport bot to solo alt I just didn't like the name teleport bot as I was going to play Symmetra mainly anymore and then anyways it turned out I kind of did but I changed the name to Soul Alt because I didn't really like the teleport bot name so anyways you can see that I'm showing off the win rates of my support classes because that's mainly what I played and by the way I need to make it very clear it was so hard this season especially this season to climb as a support player like supporting in diamond can be really hard like an unbelievably hard and there's just so many throwers and that's why it took so long. You can see the playtime, I played a shit ton. Alright, so the way I want to form this video will be me mostly talking about what I think are the best ways to get out of Masters from Diamond from my personal experience and talk about some problems that you will encounter pretty much 99% chance when trying to push for it and it will make you feel stuck and on a certain level how to work around it. So my first advice I want to give you is to play the heroes you're best at. Now I know this is all obvious and all that but it's not just that. So be able to swap within your role to suit the situation to carry. The absolutely best way way to, in my opinion, get quickly up the ranks is being a really good DPSer at a few different heroes, for example Soldier, maybe Farah and Tracer. Play those really well and not just mechanically but game sense wise as well and you will just climb instantly. It's incredible how fast you can carry with those heroes if you're insanely good. If you really can't climb with those heroes and you just consistently play DPS all the time and you stay around the same rank all the time, then for sure you're stuck at that rank. That's definitely your fault. Like, if you play the DPSer and you just can't climb and you're playing a good DPSer, then you need to go and look at your own gameplay and see where your faults lie and correct them. DPSers are always the best way to carry games and the people who are really good at the game they play DPSers and they just skyrocket through the SR. And now you can ask, well why did I play support? Well it's because I know that I am the best with supports. Every game in Diamond I felt like the supports were just not using their ultimates correctly, they were not healing me when I actually needed it and just general stuff like that so I just went support and I know that's what I can play the best as consistently and I sure I can play Genji, Tracer and Soldier, I could do that fine up to Diamond rank but after that I can't consistently carry games and that's the problem, I can't consistently as DPS do the things that I really need to do at most of the time, like 95% of the time. As support, I can, and if you have that for tanks, or if you have that for support, if you have that for DPSers, the fastest way to climb is to go for the DPS bot. If you can't really do that, you can't pick the DPS because someone has already picked DPS, go for the tank. Diva is a hard carry, Winston is a good carry, but mainly DPS. At the end of it, if you're a support player, then sure, play support, but just know that some games you just can't carry. I mean, Senyata is a pretty good carry, he can get some really important picks, but at the end of the day, a Tracer does way more damage than a Senyata and has way more impact on the game, unless you're just facing people who are just not nearly as good and you can destroy them as Senyata. Also, a Mercy can carry, and all supports can carry to a certain degree, but it's very hard compared to any DPSers or even tanks. Now, if you want to play support, you can obviously do that in solo queue as well. Consistency is all that matters if you play really well all the time and never really do any mistakes on diamond then for sure you can definitely climb to masters if you always outplay the other supports you will always have a positive win rate at the end of the day and that will make you climb so my second point I want to talk about is throwers and people refusing to swap. Just overall bad team players. Now this season seems to have a lot more of those people than previous ones and I had my fair share of lost games due to these people. Now there are ways you can work around them to a certain degree but it won't really help you win the games you have with them but to maybe not make you lose too much. It really sucks but you might have to accept the fact that these players won't really work with the team at all and you just have to let them play whatever he or she wants to play. Work around it by playing something that fits decently with it and try to to pick something you're semi comfortable with maybe if you know Orisa is something you can play decently with for example a Junkrat or a Torbon attack then sure play that it's not that bad actually at the end of the day in Diamond people are actually not as good as people think so what I mean by that is just because you're playing off meta doesn't mean you will just instantly lose the game 
maybe in top 500 if you play a Junkrat on attack, unless you're extremely, extremely good at that hero, then yeah, obviously it's not gonna work. But in Diamond, yeah, sure, throw in a Bastion on attack if the thrower wants to pick that and you really want to win the game, then try to work with that. Bastion on some maps, if you pick Reinhardt, even though Reinhardt is not even in meta, go for it, why not? If he wants to pick it, just work with him and try to be chill. That's, in my opinion, the best way to win those games. Now, if you get that type of game like three times in a row, it has happened to me, it just sucks overall. I mean, even working with the thrower is not that fun. But I feel like that's the best way to win, at least trying to work with them. But also, you can just Q-dodge. Now, I think Q-dodging is something that really people should do, and it works really well at Diamond at least. You just have to, after the game, wait a few minutes and then Q again, and hopefully you won't get that person on the same team. But if you get, you know, even a thrower again after you've done that, and even if you've Q-dodged, you Q-dodge the guy and you get another thrower, yeah, it sucks. It's just how it is though, this season has a lot of them, and I feel like the best way to actually dodge that is just get that good that you can carry a guy that does nothing. And that's why I think DPSers are for sure the best way to carry. And if you can play Tracer at a nasty tier level, then you can carry a person that's just AFKing in spawn. So definitely just try to carry him. Don't argue with him. Don't get tilted over him AFKing or in spawn. It just sucks, I know that, but that's the best way to handle it in my opinion. So my last point is going to be about communication and playing with friends. Now this is going to be two points I want to make. The first about communication is that if you're really good at calling out what happens in the game by having good game sense and awareness, then you single-handedly can carry games with your callouts. As a support player myself, I do this a lot, and as I'm a ex-World of Warcraft player, I used to be the healer there, and I always made the callouts, and I'm just used to it, and it really can carry games. If I see a flanker, or where the enemy team is attacking from, or just overall valuable information happening in the fight, what ultimates the enemy team have, where I think they're going to use them, I just say it, I let my team know, voice callouts is extremely important, and you should do it if you can. So the second part I want to talk about is playing with friends and just people that you know from online that are in your skill range. Now I want to make something really clear though. If you're a support player, duo queuing and trio queuing and all that with a DPSer is really good. It's going to benefit you a lot if the DPSer is actually really good and can consistently do well in the games you play. But solo queuing as a DPSer is way easier because teams are not as coordinated and you can usually do way more work and you won't get dove as much unless the enemy team has a duo queue or a trio queue that just works around you and just try to focus you down as soon as they see that you're carrying. But usually when you solo queue you get people who are solo queuing as well and then when you duo you face more stacked teams and that makes it a bit harder to carry games as a DPSer. But if you play a support player then obviously having consistently a good DPSer on your team that's a very good thing. As some closing thoughts, I want to say that my highest rank ever hit was 3885 on my main account and I'm currently at 3.8k flat. So I'm a master tier player. I'm not quickly passing through it either on my main or any of my alts that are in master. I have three accounts now in master with the one I just hit now. If I was a higher tier player, I would most likely been grandmaster by now on my alt account but I'm not. Knowing what I need to improve on is what keeps me and allows me to get my main and my alts to master and high master on my main to the same ranks consistently. And also what I'm really good at, what I can carry as, I know that, I know if there's a support spot, I should take that spot. If you've been stuck in platinum forever, then find out what keeps you there. Or if you've been stuck in silver, same thing, find out what keeps you there. You can ask me in the comments of this video about anything or thoughts that you have, or you can go back to any parts of my Bronze to Master series where your rank is, and listen to what my advice in that video is, because I stand by all the advice that I've given in all these videos that I've made. My overall point is that, and this was my conclusion from the first video that I made, the rank that you deserve will come to you. In my case of being a support player, it took a bit longer because I cannot really play Sanyata as well as some other supports, and in my opinion he's the best DPS kind of support carry in the game, but I did get it. 
and if you're a nasty good DPS player, your rank should come even sooner. Try to ignore all the throwers, the toxic players that feel like are the reason you're stuck there. In the long run, they don't matter. What matters is that you get better at the game and can carry these toxic people when you get them in your games. So anyways, thank you all for watching and when I made the first part of this series, it got like a thousand views in the first month and then randomly out of nowhere, it got a bunch of views. I don't know why, but it just did, which made the entire series get a massive view boost which is really motivating for someone making youtube videos out of passion for it and also thanks for all the support like when i saw the comments in the video it was really nice and a lot of people giving me feedback as well and it wasn't people saying like bro your video's trash it was actually people like oh by the way can you put this into the next video like can you explain this a bit further and all that and i really did take that to heart so thank you a bunch for all the support on the series and if you want to see more of my type of content you can check out my channel I have a bunch of videos or you can click the video on the screen right now and it will take you to a video instantly that I've made and you can subscribe if you're new to the channel as well if you want to see when I post or watch videos overall but I'll see you in the next one guys take care hope you enjoy your day